We're into the third tutorial on SVN Basics and we're looking at the process of checking out our files from the SVN server. We've already covered the core components and the installation of the SVN server. We've set up our Tortoise SVN client and the key now is using that client to check out a copy of those files from the SVN server onto our local client machine. In modules four and five, coming up after this third module, we'll look at resolving conflicts between users that are editing and maintaining the same files. And then we'll look at tags and branching in the final and fifth tutorial. We already have our Visual SVN server set up. We have a collection of files and directories that we've imported into our first repository, repo one. So the next step is for you to check out those files from the repository and then we can edit those files and commit those changes back into the repository. So in the previous tutorial, we had our SVN demo folder, and from there we imported these files into the repository. It's those files that are contained in repo one, and what we're going to do now is check out those files into this subdirectory, check out repo one user one directory, and update and edit those files on our local client machine before checking and committing those files back into the repo. We've already created two users as part of our Visual SVN server setup. So we have user one and user two. User one will check out to this repo one user one directory, and then we'll have another second subdirectory repo user two, to which the user two account will check out that same set of files to a local machine. So the first step in this process then is to get the URL of the repository. And we can do that by right clicking on the repository and selecting copy URL to clipboard. And that will copy this URL for repo one into the clipboard. If we then go to our local client machine where we've created a subdirectory to check out these files into, and we've got check out repo one user one subdirectory, we can right click on there and it's as simple as selecting the SVN checkout option in the right hand menu. And in here we want to paste in the URL that we just copied from the server and just confirm that it's going to be checking out into this directory. The key thing to note here is that it will check the files contained in that repo, i.e directory A, B, file one and file two, and it will check them out into this subdirectory. So we're not actually in that subdirectory when we started the, the checkout process. We right clicked and selected checkout on that subdirectory. We can select the head version, we'll talk about that more in tags and branching, and then click on OK. Enter our user credentials, user one and user one. And our SVN Tortoise client will now check out those files. Once the checkout is complete, you should see a dialog box confirming the checkout, listing all of the files that were checked out in the folders and the revision that it's pulled out of the SVN repository. Clicking OK on that, you should be able to drill down into your subfolder and in there you'll see a list of the files and you'll also see if you have hidden files displayed the .svn folder which contains all of the metadata that the SVN client uses to manage these files and control them. If you don't see the green ticks against the folders and the files then see one of our accompanying videos which shows you how to enable these. So now we have the contents of the repository copied locally. We can modify a file. So if I double click on that, open it in a text editor, and I add some text, and close and save that file. Once we've made that change locally, we'll see that the green tick changes to a red exclamation mark to indicate that we have modified the file locally. It's important to note that this means the file is modified locally, not that the 
version of the file or modification has taken place on the server. It's an indication to us that our local copy needs to be committed to the server in order for us to manage and maintain those changes in the main repository. From here then we can commit those changes to the repository on the server by right clicking and selecting the SVN commit option. At this point we'll get another dialog box and what SVN is asking us for is to enter a message. So update and it confirms for us the file that has changed that we are now going to commit and that its status is in a modified state. Click on OK. We get the confirmation of the commit and now we note that the revision of the overall repository is now at revision 2. Click OK. Red exclamation mark changes the green tick again to notify that we are running in sync and that our local files are up to date and fully committed to the repository. If we right click on the file again, we can do Tortoise SVN show log, and from here we get a list of all of the transactions, commits, if you like, that have taken place on this particular file. So, file one was modified and was updated to revision two. And um, back on the 31st of March, we did the initial import, and that was imported with a list of additional files and directories that are detailed here as well. So this is all very well, but the whole point of this version control system is to share and collaborate on these files. So what happens when another user updates the file and your local copy becomes out of sync? Well, what we're going to do in the next tutorial is look at that process. And that overall process being that we check out to our local machine, this might be as user one, and a second user checks out to their local machine, and that's as user two. Back on users one machine, we make changes to the files and we commit them to the server. But unbeknown to us, user two is making updates to the same files and goes to commit those. And it's at this stage that those changes from user two could very well overwrite the changes that user one committed to the repository. So it's that process and that concept of conflicts that we will address and review in the fourth tutorial on RSVN Basics 